In this video lecture, we are going to understand the angular width and angular position of the dark and bright fringes in case of Young's double slit experiment. Please note that this figure is not exactly to the scale. So here S1 and S2 are the slits and this is the midpoint. The distance between these two slits D is in millimeter and the distance from the screen to our S1 and S2 slits is capital D which is in meters. So this is capital D. Now we know that the fringe pattern formed over here is n is equal to 0 that is always central bright fringe then first dark first bright second dark second bright and so on. Correct. Now we also know the expression for the path difference in case of Young's double slit experiment. The expression says d sin theta that is equal to d sin theta n as n lambda and right now I am only talking about the bright fringes. So suppose this is our nth bright fringe which is at some distance away from the center of the screen. Let me say this distance as xn. So the distance from the center of the screen that is point O to the nth bright fringe is suppose xn. Now what am I going to do is I am going to connect the center of S1 and S2 to this particular point over here. Now this angle is said as theta n and this is the angular position of the nth bright fringe with respect to this baseline or this central line which is connecting S1, S2's midpoint with the center of the screen. So if I am asked to find out this angular position then I am supposed to use this expression and we are going to consider theta very small over here so when theta is small you can say that d sin theta is only equal to d theta so this can be written as sin theta n is equal to n lambda times d and then this can be further reduced as theta n is equal to n lambda by d now you need to understand this very well that this is considered by theta very very small and this answer would be in radians Okay, so if I am asked to find out the angular position of first bright fringe which means I am supposed to connect this with this one over here. Now this angle would be theta 1 and I should say that theta 1 for the bright fringe because here under you, underneath you have a dark fringe so that angle would also be theta 1 but that would be for the dark fringe. So this can be further written as n is equal to 1 so theta 1 that is equal to lambda by d. Okay. In the same way for the second bright fringe this can be written as 2 lambda that is theta 2 2 lambda by d. So which is somewhere over here. So I should connect these two points now this angle is theta 2. Now the most important part the difference in the angle between these two this is known as angular width. Now you must understand very well that between two bright fringes you have a dark fringe. Now this is your second order dark fringe. So you are going to get the angular width of the second dark fringe if you subtract theta 2 and theta 1. So let us do that. So theta 2 minus theta 1 this would be the angular width of second dark fringe and that can be further written as theta 2 is 2 lambda by d minus theta 1 is lambda by d. So lambda by d is our answer which is the angular width of the dark fringe. Now it doesn't matter you are talking about the angular width of the dark fringe or the angular width of the bright fringe the answer remains the same. Okay. So now let us try to find out the angular width of 
the bright fringe so for that you need to consider two dark fringes okay now simply i am going to consider write the expressions for the dark fringe d sin theta n that is equal to 2n minus 1 lambda by 2 now this is the expression for the path difference for the dark fringes okay now when i am supposed to consider the first dark fringe so n is equal to 1 so i would get d sin theta 1 and this theta 1 is not the previous theta 1 this is for the dark fringe and let me show you over here that would be even smaller than this theta 1 because i need to connect this with this one and this angle would be again theta 1 but this is less than this theta 1 this theta 1 is for the dark and this theta 1 is for the bright fringe so again is equal to n is equal to 1 so it would be lambda by 2 and simply sine of theta 1 that is equal to lambda by 2d and then theta 1 would be equal to lambda by 2d considering this angles to be very very small okay now this is the angular position of the first this is the angular position of first dark fringe in the same way if i find out for n is equal to 2 then d sine theta 2 that is equal to n is equal to 2 so it will be 3 lambda by 2 now this theta 2 can be written as 3 lambda by 2d because sine theta is approximately equal to theta theta very very small right now if i am supposed to find out angular width angular width of the bright fringe now let me say that which bright fringe we are talking about so here this is your theta 1 and this angle would be theta 2 this angle would be theta 2 because you are talking about the first dark and the sec second dark and between that you have first bright fringe so basically you are finding the angular width of first bright fringe n is equal to 1 that is first bright now if you subtract theta 2 and theta 1 so that is theta 2 minus theta 1 that will be equal to 3 lambda by 2d minus lambda by 2d so again your answer turns out to be lambda by d so answer remains the same whether you are talking about the angular width of the first dark or first bright or any of the dark fringes or any of the bright fringes answer would be the same but you need to understand very clearly that the angular positions will be different so as you go higher and higher this angle will keep on increasing so angular positions would be different but the angular width would be certainly the same for any of the dark and bright fringes now the other way to understand this is to do the following what can be done is suppose if i am supposed to find out the angular width of this fringe so i should connect the upper two points so if i am again supposed to find the angular width of this i should understand that this bright fringe is sandwiched between two dark fringes so i am going to connect these two dark fringes with the screen center sorry the slit center like this one and of course this would be my angular width now i can use this formula of the sector which we all which we have already learnt in grade 11 that l is equal to theta times r which can be applied for small angles and here we are considering all angles as same now this distance is l which is the linear width and we have already understood that linear width is equal to lambda d by d now since these all angles are small so this 
fringe is very near to the screen center because all these angles are very very small so this is basically as far as the as far as the drawing is concerned this is shown at a larger distance but this would be very close to the screen center which means if this is very close then this distance or this distance or this distance capital D would be the same okay so this distance would be considered as capital D so you can state that L is equal to theta angular width multiplied by capital D now this L is nothing but the beta over here and beta is lambda D by D that is equal to theta width multiplied by D so again getting cancelled so you can also write with respect to this formula as well as like this one now you can simply derive this with respect to any of the dark fringes or any of the bright fringes now on the basis of the content taught to you I would like to apply the same logic for the central bright fringe and now this central bright fringe is actually sandwiched between first dark on the either side and if I join this point the center of both the slits to first dark like this then this is the angular position theta 1 for the first dark and theta 1 for the first dark in the downward direction so this entire angle twice of theta 1 is the angular width for the central maximum and to be very honest all these diagrams are all these fringes and every all these diagrams to be very honest over here the fringes which are shown very thicker over here are extremely small right so this is two twice of the theta one that would be the twice of theta one sorry angular width of central bright fringe now if I apply the same concept like uh, d sine theta 1 that is equal to 2 n minus 1 lambda by 2 and I should substitute here n is equal to 1 so d sine theta 1 that is equal to lambda by 2 which means theta 1 is equal to lambda by 2 d assuming this angle theta to be very very small so twice of theta 1 would be the angular width angular width that is equal to lambda by d so we are getting the angular width of the central bright fringe same as the angular width of any of the dark or the bright fringes so this does not happen in the case of diffraction in case of diffraction actually theta is not very very small so this assumption doesn't hold in case of the diffraction pattern and this central maximum would be the double the size of the other fringes or the other maximas and minimas but that is in the case of diffraction not in case of the interference.